This is your morning jolt with Larry Flick on OutQ, Sirius 109, XM 98. Good morning. Just about nine minutes past the hour. That's Love Left Bleeding by Ariel Aparicio. It's a good song. It's a very good song. It's the first single from a new album called Aerials. Mm -hmm. She enjoys a little wordplay. I'm Larry Flick, and this is your Morning Jolt on Sirius XM OutQ. Keith Price is here, and we are joined by Ariel Aparicio. Good morning. Good morning. Is this thing need to be in front of my face? Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh uh, darling. Larry, don't you know where to put it? Oh. Excuse me. Uh, obviously you don't. Oh, oops. Or at least know how to handle one. <laughs> oh, well, she's really telling us her, hus well, her husband's not that big. Uh, oh, I got it now. It's right where it mm -hmm. should be. Mm -hmm. Pointing right at me. Yes. Well, <laughs> move a little closer to it, oh, baby. Don't no, be afraid no, no, of just, it. It's just rather large, so I wasn't mm. didn't know what to expect. <laughs> like I said, bless you, your poor husband. Yeah. <laughs> when bottoms collide, anyway. <laughs> what? 
you started this you started this months ago. I did. I did. Because I was on Twitter. Y'all know I'm on Twitter all the time, right? And I get a tweet from Ariel saying, who do I have to blow to get on your show? And I'm like, me. And then I said twice. <laughs> I said me. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So uh, <sighs> nice to finally meet you. <laughs> Likewise. Because I was Likewise. like, you know what? Who is this annoying queen? <laughs> and why am I dealing? Why am I dealing? I don't care. I really did. That's exactly what I was thinking. And I think you figured out for a while that that's exactly what I was yeah, thinking. Yeah, I, so he sent me his EP. I the, left it alone for a while. And uh, and he had his, his his trusty publicist send me the uh, the EP, uh-huh. the the basement tapes. Right. And uh, we started playing Lucille. Mm-hmm. Really good track. Yeah, thanks. And I started I started to get it. I started to get it and I started to think, you know, he's doing something that a lot of other a lot of other guys who happen to be gay making music aren't doing. You're mm. making rock and roll, but you're making actual rock and roll. You're not making faux rock and roll. Mm. Have you always been a rock and roll kid? Yeah, that's uh, always been my history. I mean, I, you know, I grew up with stuff that I was listening to with my family, but as soon as um, I made that decision to listen to my own music, it was rock and roll. That's what I wanted, you know, and that's that's what I gravitated to. And it was classic rock first, and then came. The new wave and the punk rock and all the other stuff. And so, how, do you mind me asking how old you are? Yes, I do mind you asking. Well, I'm going to ask you anyway. How old are you? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not going to answer. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's just say she's putting lots of rice and beans on that face. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm just teasing. I am a little long in the tooth, if you, if that expression still works. <laughs> mm. Like I said in my Twitter, she's not tall, so <laughs> we'll figure it out. But anyway... <laughs> I'm only teasing you. Now, the reason why I ask is because you you reference a lot of uh, you have a lot of really smart musical references in your music that mm. kind of uh, almost uh, betray whatever you're you know like whatever age you're trying to because because it, it it you have to have had a certain amount of experience to understand the musical references that you're making. I yeah. mean, you're you're, refer- you're you're referencing well, you've covered Jim Carroll. And that's not the same as covering psychedelic furs, which you've also done. Mm-hmm. I mean, Jim Carroll is smart man's music. Yeah. That's New York punk. Yeah, absolutely. Rest his yeah. rest his soul. He's yeah. not with us anymore. Yeah. So, when did you discover music? How, were you were you just a baby? Um, I discovered music pretty much in uh, in elementary school. That's when I discovered what what became my music, which is rock and roll. And, um, you know, I grew up with music all the time. There was music in the house, but it wasn't rock. It was, you know, what my sister listened to, what my brother listened to. And what did they listen to? Were they just pop kids? Well, you know, more like, you know, disco, funk, and salsa. I mean, the stuff that, you know, that grew up around the house. But once, once, and I remember this is in in second grade. Now, we had we had a little Donna Summer reference, and I'll tell you. (laughs) Yeah. I'll tell you. When I was in, when I was in, like, first grade and second grade, I used to have my little notebooks. Where, yeah. I, where, I, where I wrote Donna Summer, number one disco queen, all the time on all my little notebooks. I was very proud. You're so cute. I was very proud to be a Donna Summer fan. And then I, mm. <laughs> one of my friends from, from elementary school, Jeannie, Jeannie Highsmith, she was, like, Hi, Jeannie. she was like, have you listened to rock and roll? And she introduced me to the Beatles and the Rolling Stones and Kiss back then. And... After I started listening to that, I never went back. Again. So we would have been <laughs> you and I would have been really good friends in school. Yeah, because I, so. I think I had a very similar musical path. Yeah, I did, and that's why when I started to actually listen to your music, I thought I totally, I'm totally clicking with where you're coming from. Ariel Aparicio is with us here on the Morning Jolt, and uh, his new album is called Ariel's. Let's listen to a little taste of a song from the album. This is called Tattered Hearts. <laughs>
that's good, right? That's called Tattered Hearts by Ariel Aparicio from the album Aerials, which is available now, and it's a really good record. And um, things you need to know about Ariel Aparicio. He is a, a rock and roll artist. He's openly gay. He's shorter than he looks in his photos. <laughs> He's older than he looks in his photos, oh, even though. Oh, oh, ah, snap. Got him. Oh, snap. <laughs> See, that's why you get. And it. and He's does not understand the meaning of a of a get in get out song. He'll, he'll, all of his songs are are are, are they they they're luxurious. <laughs> and I'm only teasing you because I actually like your record a lot. Thanks. I like your record a whole lot. <laughs> and what I like about it is, and here's the thing, I'm teasing him because we that's kind of how we started to talk by, by jesting online Absolutely. is uh, what I really like about your record is that it's it's really smart and it's a little daring because you're not making music that any other out gay artist has ever sent me and and that's a compliment because even the, the folks who are trying to rock are doing it and it's always like, well, fix it in the remix. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it honestly, as much as I, and we obviously, you've heard my show, play a lot of dance music mm-hmm. here. I enjoy dance music. As but do if that's, I. But if that's not your intention as an artist, <laughs> it gets under my skin yeah. when, you, when you tear your song apart in the name of uh, you know, hitting the popper crowd. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I like what you're doing because it's, it's it's it has a lot of integrity and oh, so you. how hard a road has that been because it's not gay music well i mean i i had started making music you know since i was a kid and you know i, I always knew i was gay but i wasn't you know even when i started playing with bands i wasn't like you know an out artist with you know carrying the mm-hmm. The gay flag and everything else, but I you're mean, not in either. No, 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 I mean, no. I was, no. you know, I've but read I, your press and yeah. you're definitely. But I've always been true to myself to the music that I wanted to make, right. which has always been. I've always been drawn to rock. But here's what's interesting, though. Before you, f- I want to jump in, yeah, because sure. I want you to add this perspective to what you're saying. You're also Cuban American, mm-hmm. and so you're thumbing your nose in a way at two subcultures that demand a different sound than you're making. <laughs> yeah. You are because you're you're a gay man yeah. and you're openly gay and you're proud of it and you have you know all of that. But you're also, you know, I- I'm assuming a proud Cuban American. It's in all of your press. Yeah. And this is not either. Yeah, this really. is this is if I didn't if I and 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 I don't know how you'll take this, but if I closed my eyes and never looked at your photo, I would listen to your record and I would think that you have greasy hair, you're from the Midwest and, you know, have a girlfriend. And mm. and I don't look that way? No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've tried to look that way my whole life, actually. <laughs> we all have. It we all point. have. We all have. But you know what? Surrender. I mean, I think that I do draw from all those things in my music. Um, my culture is still in my music. Um, I mean, I'm playing, I'm playing rock. I'm playing rock and roll. But that doesn't mean that I can't draw from other things that have that I've grown up with that I've that have influenced me, you know, my whole life. Um, you know, and every record that I've made, you know, there's always some kind of like Spanish reference in there, either mm-hmm. a song in Spanish, something very rhythmic. There's always something there, so it's not something that I that I that I put in the background. I bring but it's it with subtle. Me. You're it's very subtle. subtle. It, even even yeah. even in the song Lucille, which we played a lot here yeah. from the basement tapes. You can listen to it and and take it on surface value and just think it's about a chick. If you listen to it closely, it's about a, a, a transgender uh, person. Uh, yeah, absolutely. But it, it, it's not like pow, pow, pow right in the face. Yeah. Which, again, as I said when we started talking, all jokes aside, you're a smart kid and you make really smart music. And and do any of the people in your life understand the music you make? Um, a lot of people do. The, it's funny because the closest people in my life, I don't, I'm not sure if they really get it. Um, but a lot of the fans that I've acquired over the years seem to get it well, a lot I've, better. Well, I've been, I've been, you know, learning about you since we first started talking, and 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 I hear from your fans yeah. all the time. You have very vocal fans, which is very cool because, <laughs> well, it's cool because they're not psycho. Yeah, they're passionate. Well, some of them. Uh, well, never mind. I mean, you know, just by nature of the word <laughs> fan, but but what, I, what but they tend to actually they support you by listening 
to the yeah. stations that play you, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, which is a really nice thing and it's appreciated. Um, but they're all over the map in terms of the kinds of people they are, which Absolutely. is also which is also really yeah. interesting and very very cool. Yeah. Um, was there any part of you, because of the kind of music you make, that sometimes wish you could take back some of what you've revealed, and be a little bit more mysterious? Um, no, no. no. Um, I, I I I I reveal myself through my music. Mm-hmm. So everything that I write and sing about is honest. And, uh, you know, it, it, it rings through for me inside, mm-hmm. and I want to share that with other people. And, you know, however they interpret it, it's fine with me. It doesn't, you know, I, I, I don't necessarily hit people on the head with certain things. There's a lot of themes going on. There's a lot of things, a lot of very personal things that I talk about in my music that are personal to me. That doesn't necessarily mean that the person who's listening it gets it the same way. I mean, the first track you played, Love Left Bleeding, which we were, what we were just talking it's about. It's a great song. You know, that is, and I just re- kind of revealed that to my sister who was in tears because it's a song about our father. Not not our father, just Your my, parents. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, and she didn't know that until I told her. Um, and now she's, you know, reading the lyrics, listening to the song. And, you know, as soon as I told her that, I think it was on a text or whatever, she's crying. She's calling me. She's like, oh, my God. You know, I get every word now. You know, she didn't know that before. And, you know, it, 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 and, and I, I prefer it that way. I like people to interpret it their own way, mm. whatever, however it touches them. You know, I just want to touch them. Well, let's listen to another, a little bit of another song from the album Ariel's by Ariel Avariccio, who's with us here in the Jolt. It's 24 past the hour. If you have any questions or comments, our toll-free number is 866-305-6887. Let's listen to a little bit of She Can Show Us. Judgment on you, arriving by night, shuffle the That's really good, right? That's called She Can Show Us by Ariel Aparicio. That's from his album Ariel's, which is available right now. It's really good, right? It's really interesting, textured, smart music. I'm Larry Flick, and this is your Morning Jolt on Sirius XM Al Q. It's 27 past. 
Our toll-free number is 866-305-6887. And Ariel is in studio with us. And um, so when you're writing, Ariel, and and, yes, and you're trying to come up with an idea, or you have an idea, and and what, 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 I've, what we're learning is that you like to tell the truth, but you like to leave a little ambiguity so that the song can be embraced by other people. Yes. So how... Do you do you parse that out? Do you blow it all out in the song and then edit it out, or do you start by incrementally easing stuff in? How are you like a song like she can show us? How did you start writing that song? It is uh, it's it's pretty subconscious for me. Like I, I'm not I, I'm not I don't think about it much when I'm in the process. It just kind of happens. So mm-hmm. you know I'm sitting with the guitar, riffing on something. Uh, the lyrics are usually just start developing themselves. I'm not trying to that I'm touched by some special power, <laughs> but it's, they they start, they kind of start writing themselves. I'm not ve- I'm not a I'm never really aware of what I'm writing about until like halfway through the song. And so, <laughs> does it do, do, do the songs come because subconsciously you've been thinking about something sure. or someone? Sure. Is that really how it yeah. starts? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, uh, you, I know you you're, you look he looks a little shy about saying it the way he does you, the way you are, but yeah. I believe that a really good writer, a really good writer, has it, it is a gift, and it does happen naturally. I think when, when people labor to write songs, that's when you hear some of the dog meat that gets yeah. released. <laughs> yeah. I think the really good yeah, stuff I, I, tends yeah. to come exactly yeah. as it does yeah. to you. It yeah. just sort of happens. Yeah, she, uh, she can show us. that. W- I wrote that in the summer of 2008. Yeah. In the middle of our our presidential election, in the middle of all the all the politics that was going on, in the middle of you know our our euphoria with 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 Obama and what was happening at that moment that's what and, and the, there's a lot of politics in that song right you know and again I try to be subtle with it but that's how that's that was the inspiration for that song and it just kind of developed you know as it went along the first line judgment by June happened uh, because it was it was the end of the primaries and it was when uh, Obama was declared the winner so for for the for the the the, uh, the Democratic Party for the election, it was June, and that's where that line came from, and it kind of just developed. So then, itself. how did it become I, female gender? Uh, it's uh, the she in the song started as representing Hillary. Okay. And then, because uh, that's what I was thinking about, um, you know, I was a fan of both, but mostly a fan of Obama. Um, but I remember, you know, how that, you know, how that went down that day and I was you know very touched by the whole by everything and what what was going on um, but the she became was was Hillary and then it became more of you know more of you know the Statue of Liberty more of you know, more of all this other stuff it just got broader know. yeah yeah so more of this you know American thing right you know. so um, when I want to go back to how uh, about the context you put your music in that you put those songs in which is which has this this sort of that there it's it's all it's it's rock and roll it's slightly left of center in in industry terms they would call it alternative mm-hmm. um, there's a there's a there's that kind of New York punk spirit in it what is it about all those sounds that appeal to you because you you do have a lot of again listening to your music and anyone who's who listens to your music carefully hears a lot of Late seventies, early eighties, New York downtown mm-hmm. rock and roll, in in your references is, uh, I I hear television, I hear New York Dolls, mm-hmm. I hear Patti Smith, I hear okay. Jim Carroll, I hear yeah. all of that in your music. Um, what's appealing to all of to you about all of that? That was that was the period that I developed, you know, as a person. Like I I became who who I am today. I, it was I first got to New York in the early 80s that's when i started discovering you know new york started discovering all this other music that i hadn't really discovered where earlier. were you where did where, you come from I, I grew up in miami okay like, you know okay. i'm cuban it's the law you know we're supposed <laughs> yeah. to, so we have to get go through miami you and gloria estefan point. right right we have to go <laughs> the rhythm's there, gotta get then, you and then, then you have to run away from it the rhythm got me the rhythm got you and then, and then, you, and then, you, and then you fled so, yeah, exactly. exactly so but yeah, it was me getting to New York early '80s, discovering all these things, you know, about this amazing city and about the amazing music 
that was here. I, I wasn't exposed to that much when I, you know, that much of that kind of music growing up because there wasn't that, it wasn't, you know, there wasn't this punk scene. There wasn't this even new wave scene that existed in, 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 in Miami, even though I was gravitating toward that kind of music. Mm -hmm. There was one little club called Fire and Ice, which I remember in Miami, and it was, you know, us kids going there, and it was usually like seven or eight of us. <laughs> and That's that was so it. Funny. Listening to, you know, the B-52s and uh, Ian Dury and the Blockheads and, you know, that, the Flying Lizards. That's the stuff that we were listening to. Um, and I just kept, kept you know digging for more stuff you know and when I got to New York I was able to go to go to St. Mark's I lived on St. Mark's you know and and, and looking at the album bins remember we at all remember, sounds yeah at sounds yeah, yeah. you know Com coming Ariel, home every day with like six or seven you know we, records I would I will bet my rent money that we we walked past each other about a hundred <laughs> times I'm sure yeah because that's where I was yeah at exactly that time yeah that's Every day, crazy. in between, I mean, I would go there, just, in, I was at, at, at NYU, in between classes, you yeah. know, if I had 20 minutes, I'd go to Sounds. So you were in NYU, <laughs> I was at Queens College, mm. and I would get on the train and come in, because yeah. I lived in the Bronx, yeah. and I would go to Sounds, and I would go to CB's, yeah. and Pyramid Club, right. that's, that's, that's and where I spent all my evenings. Mud Club, <laughs> remember Mud Club, and Max's. Yeah, Mud Club, when I got to New York, I think Mud Club was, had was, just closed. was done, yeah. so I didn't get a chance to experience that, which I wish I had. But. You know, Danceteria. Was, yeah, it was Danceteria, which was the first club I ever which went to Which was more the New, new Wave joint. Yeah, but it was awesome. And yeah. I, I saw uh, Karen Finley the first night I was at Danceteria. Do you remember Oh, Karen yeah, of course. Oh. Artist. Of course. Of course. Of course. Of course. Shoving, that, shoving like, you know, uh, yams up her ass. Yeah, exactly. Work. This is like some kid. I'm a kid coming from Miami. Yeah. Going to Danceteria wasn't even legal, so you can still try to figure out my. I name. was always, you know? I was always sneaking into. You were a little. I, I'm, I'm, I'm calculating it. <laughs> I was just sitting there you're, thinking. No, you're, you're, you're probably, you're, you're, you're a little bit young. You're younger than I am, but you're older than you look, which yeah. is very good. Oh, it's you. that Cuban blood and, mm -hmm. and the Botox. Exactly, yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> Ariel Aparicio with us here, but uh, but it, I mean, wasn't that a great? I mean, do you do you uh, miss that period? It was such I, a great I, time I of music, that right? I mean, there was uh, so much, so much. There was music and it was art. And there was all this amazing thing that was actually became was one, and I talk about that all the time. And I I've tried to kind of recreate that in my own way now. I have this little thing called Bully MGMT where I bring in artists, not just musicians, you know, poets and painters, and we try to kind of like you know uh, explore with each other right. and, and 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 work together. And because that reminds me of that period, I you know I was. At, you know, in college, also working at night because I had to pay my way. I, I, you know, I got some scholarship at NYU, but you know, we were po, as they say. That's why I lived in the a, Bronx a with po, my mama and po, daddy. Po Cuban family, um, but you know, I, I worked at Palladium at night, um, so I was there every night seeing the most amazing people. Literally every night, I would, you know, I was a little busboy, you know, <laughs> emptying, picking up glasses and emptying up, you know, Andy Warhol's glasses and, and, and Grace Jones and Mick Jagger. And I mean, these are the people in Keith Haring and, and Maplethorpe, who was just, uh, you know, amazing to me. Like, these are the people who I saw, night, mm. you know, being a kid. It's you know, such a great it, time. You know, it was just an amazing, it really was. It was a great you know? time because it was, it was, it was creative. Yeah. It was dangerous. Yeah. Sometimes it was a little dark, yeah. but there was always. I always felt like there was an there was a, a an energy of of hope. Yeah, I always felt like people were indulging in the darkness and and venting and ranting because they thought it was going to lead to something. Yeah, and I don't really feel like people do that now. I, I yeah, I agree. Yeah, I, I don't feel that now. I I don't feel that kind of passion. So, do and, you feel completely out of out of time, even with the because the music, your music captures all of that yeah yeah it really does ariel i mean again i i, I know you're looking at me half like i say well, where's the joke there's no <laughs> joke um you really it's it you really do capture that so do you feel kind of like you're you're fighting a potentially losing battle with your music uh i, I at times i do yeah because i feel like you know that it's kind of like the wrong time for the kind of music that i make but um I do feel that I, I am reaching a small group of people, um, which keeps growing daily, and those people are getting it. And I think that you know, I, 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 I am touching those people, and mm. they kind of really feel 
and they tell me all the time they feel it to their core they feel mm. you know what what i felt back then and they mm. you know and they are moved by it and they are inspired by it and you know and they want to dance and jump and do all these things you know to the the music that i'm doing so you know i you know, I still feel like you know I'm 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 you know my job is being done. Well, let's listen to a little bit of another song from the album Ariel's by Ariel Aparicio, who's with us here in the Morning Jolt. It's 38 past, and this is called Sorry.
good stuff. That song is called Sorry by Ariel Aparicio from the album Ariels. Are y'all seeing what I mean? This is a good record. This is a smart record. And that is the brilliant Lisa Germano singing at the end there. How did you get Lisa Germano on your record, Ariel? Uh, I had to blow her twice. <laughs> You give a lot of head, don't you? Hey, you do what you got to do in this industry. <laughs> if you're wondering what in the world we're talking about, the way Ariel and I met. I hope Lisa's not listening, actually. Hi, Lisa. How you doing? Come on my show. I love you. I'm a big fan of all your records. I, I love Lisa. Um, I love her. We met, uh, Ariel and I met on Twitter. I've heard of him. I've heard of you. But we met on Twitter when he's like, who do I have to blow to get on your show? And I'm like, me. Who do you think? The guy standing behind me? Me. <laughs> and uh, as recent as what an hour ago I'm like, no yesterday it was like get your knee pads on yeah, bitch we're, we're, we're still gonna get it. reflex we're still working it yeah nothing um, nooch <laughs> yeah well you know the show's not over yet got new, uh, yeah well mm. there's still plenty of time oh uh, see how you are oh, I got say. you know what I got your number <laughs> times ten bitch don't hurt yourself work cause I'll hurt you instead in more ways than one anyway so how 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 did you get to meet Lisa? Um, and actually, I, I never even met her. She she recorded it in California. I sent her a note because um, uh, I'm I've always been a big fan. She's and brilliant. I, uh, I, I just and, and actually, when I wrote this part of the song, I had somebody else in mind um, at first. I thought. This part, because it's the apology, the song is me apologizing, and then to the woman at that point. Right. Um, and then at the, the other, at, at this part of the song, it's that woman kind of saying, okay, but you know, fuck off. You know, so right. it's like, so, um, but I thought at first when we wrote that part, when I wrote that part, I thought maybe it should be sung a lot stronger. I was thinking uh, Ronnie Spector. I was thinking, you know, Edgy, you know, yeah, raspy. with a lot of like ah, full body voice, you know. But the more I thought about it, the thought thought about it, I thought it would be much more powerful to have a really soft, it, subtle absolutely, voice absolutely. saying saying the message that she's saying. You know, I thought that would work much better. And then I thought, you know, I was like, you know, I've always been a fan of Lisa, and I was like, my God, that voice so haunting, mm. so perfect for that part. And you know, I sent her an email. She was really sweet, really responsive. We spoke back and forth several times because I had sung the part, and I sung it full voice. And you know, after, you know, she loved the song, loved the part. wasn't sure where she was gonna, you know, what she was singing. So then, when I I told her specifically what her part was, she was like, "Oh, that's not really my voice." Um, you know, I sing, and I was like, "No, I know, I I get it." You know, and and then I explained to her what the whole song was about, and I explained to her what. Her part was about. And she was like, "Oh my god, okay, I get it." <laughs> and and was, obviously and she, she did it. because yeah, it's, she, it's, it's, she was the perfect, it's the perfect code yeah, of the song. And, you know, she, really. she sent it to us afterwards. You know, I hadn't. You know, I wasn't in the studio. She did it in California. She said she, and I was like, "Oh my god!" I was, you know, practically moved to tears when I heard that. Like, it's be, it's a beautiful perfect, part of the song, perfect. and it comes when you least expect it. Yeah, and that's yeah. what makes it really work. Yeah, you're a sweetheart. Oh, thank really you. nice to have you here. Thank you. Will you please come back? Anytime, Actually, knee pads and all. I, well, Ooh, yeah, right. Still waiting. Yeah. Uh, no, I would love for you to come back and, and play next time. Oh, I would love to. I would love to. We'll set that up. Yeah. Uh, but Ariel Aparicio has a record. It's called Ariel's. It's really, really, really good. And um, there's so many reasons why you should support this record. A, it's good. Mm -hmm. Duh. But, you know, I mean, so many people are, are looking for folks who happen to be gay. That's not why you're here. <laughs> um, but for some people, that's an important part of it. And uh, it would be nice if you, as a supportive listener, supported someone who's not uh, letting themselves be fed down the factory conveyor belt. Someone who's actually making music because it's the music they're meant to make. The music that they're being told inside they have to make. So that's... Listen to the record. If it moves you, support it. And uh, I want to go out with my personal favorite song from the album. Sorry is very close. <laughs> but my I want, my favorite song on the record is Flowers. Oh, thank you. It's a gorgeous song. And uh, listen to this and uh, stick around. It's your morning jolt. Thank you, Larry. Once 
Jolt with Larry Flynn on OutQ, Sirius 109, XM 98. 